Hey, what's up guys? Welcome, Daily Theologians. I wanted to do a uh, quick review of an article by Doug Wilson of Blog and May Blog. Now, his name is the name that shall not be mentioned among certain circles because he's a bit uh, abrasive and uh, direct in some of what he says. I actually think he has a lot of common sense and wisdom. While I don't condone everything he says, the fact that I have to put a disclaimer in saying I don't agree with everything someone says shows you the level of vitriol for Doug Wilson. But I would say overall, I think a lot of what he says is worth considering and uh, very well thought out. Now, this article has to do with the current culture that we're in, and specifically the ideology of postmodernism or humanism, whatever we want to call this. It's essentially this nihilistic view that everything is meaningless, pop popularized by Nietzsche and others. And he makes a point that I think Christians would do well to really think about here. If everything is meaningless, the rejection of Christianity is also meaningless, so you should quit doing that. But they can't quit doing that because they're God-haters, not God-take-it-or-leave-iters. This is important. We're not up against a neutral party, and Answers in Genesis, Ken Ham, often points this out. That was a terrible <laughs> Ken Ham accent. But uh, they're not neutral. Atheism is a facade. They're anti-theists. This is important. They're not a theist. They're anti-theists. They do not want there have to have been no God. They want no God now because they successfully killed and replaced him with themselves, basically. And so if all is permitted, and including uh, all these things listed here, um, the question is, where does morality come from? And his argument as he goes through this article is the current kind of atheism is that is current among modern academics is nothing but housebroken Nietzscheism. Nietzscheanism, to use a writer's description of it. The people don't matter. They want to move beyond good and evil in the classroom. I wanted to highlight this. They also want to crack down hard on fraternities and things like that, but then at the same time, they have no basis for why they do what they do. In this system, all is not permitted. Christianity is not permitted. Christ is not permitted. Christians are not permitted. To be an Orthodox believing Christian is to be guilty of violating the only real taboo they have. So I would have to encourage you in this. Go right ahead and don't go along with that. And he says here that this, the double standard is really the point. When Christians complain about the double standard that is applied to us, this is evidence that we're still actually believing the earlier lie of the seculars, the promise neutrality. And that's the whole point of this article. There is no neutrality. Jesus said that. He said, you're either for me or against me, gathered or scattered. It's not really a double cross. It's just we're being naive as Christians. There is no neutral. There's no neutral. And so when we see this double standard applied throughout the secular world, and specifically in our culture here and in Australia, we know that it's actually uh, just them and their actual ultimate goal. It is either Christ or the gods of chaos. Since we've been, uh, since we are Christians, we should know what to do when presented with a choice like that. Christ is Lord and is not limited to some cozy spiritual realm beyond our eyes, between your ears. Christ is Lord of the United States, Lord of the Idahos, <laughs> Lord of Idaho, I guess, and the Lord of Latta County. I have no idea where that is. Christ is Lord and we must confess him as Lord. And by Lord, I don't mean Lord of some invisible spiritual realm. I mean Lord of the Lords, King of Kings, Emperor of Emperors. I mean that he is the desire of nations, says Doug Wilson. And uh, this will not be brought about through a referendum or general election. Jesus is not running for president, and we are not his campaign staff. Rather, he's already been crowned, and he already holds the scepter. And, and we are heralds sent out into the hinterlands to tell the people. This is important. We proclaim a message of truth and reconciliation. We tell people to lay down their arms, repent, and believe the gospel. And then he goes on, on law and liberty. And this is important. Christians, we are not libertarian. Uh, we don't want just total freedom. We want right laws. And he makes the argument in the article at some point in here that the Bill of Rights was actually given to limit the power and liberty of the government because the founders knew that they would abuse those uh, powers if they didn't have limited uh, constraints on them, which is true. So we want good ruling uh, laws to give up some of our liberties so that the liberty of the gospel and conscience may flourish and uh, by conscience, of course, you have to align this with reality. You can't just say, well, my conscience told me to do X, Y, Z. Obviously, there is a objective moral standard of right and wrong, and it is God. It's the Ten Commandments written on the heart of every person. People are made in the image of God. And you have to start with that, or you devolve, descend uh, rapidly into a primordial ooze of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle slime, where it just becomes a total mess, which is what we're seeing with the Netflix debacle and the Dave Chappelle stuff where people are upset because it says a woman is a woman and a man is a man. This is not crazy. And then he says, take heart, the future of Christian 
Uh, don't don't lose sight of the fact that what is desired in Australia is desired for the United States and also Canada. These are uh, total power grabs to rule and reign in an anti-God way. This is, I mean, it really is. And some people say, well, no, that's not really their intent. Intent doesn't matter. Uh, reality is what matters, and you're either for Christ or against him. And uh, to a lesser or greater degree, that affects people based on the amount of power they have. Typically, the more power people have, the less constraint of conscience you will see, and the more evil reigns. It's just the natural default because the human heart is desperately wicked. Above all things, who can know it? Well, God knows it, and it says that uh, people must repent. And I've been reading through the Gospel of Luke with our family, and the theme of Luke often is repentance. Jesus talks about repenting and the joy over the sinner that repents. Not the religious fuddy dud that thought he could keep the law, but the, the publican, the dreaded tax collector, the Zacchaeus, the, those ones that repent and turn to him. And he also says uh, in Matthew 11, no one can come to him unless the Father who sent him draws them. Uh, and to draw is to be dragged. Uh, or I'm sorry, unless uh, he's chosen by the Father. Anyways, basically, election's true. God's sovereign grace is true. People come to God because he first came to us, and he regenerates the heart, and we respond in trust and repentance towards the death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man, Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. Remember to hammer that like button, like the 95 Theses, and leave a comment. I know Doug Wilson is polarizing, but I often think he's polarizing because Christians try to avoid controversy, or speaking the truth because it's controversial or may not go with the narrative. But, I mean, we're in a culture that is totally crazy. And if what you're saying is going along well with what the culture is saying and you're not uh, seeing any issues, then something is off. So thanks for watching and uh, God bless.